Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about character design for comics in Clip Studio Paint, presented by Amankai Nawalpan. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. This webinar will be recorded and the recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quiñones, myself, Joanna Brower, and Amankai Nawalpan. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your only one solution for stunning ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Also, we want to invite you to interact with us in this webinar. So share your Instagram stories with hashtag webinar at amankai underscore art graphicsly welcome and Clip Studio official. We'll be sharing your stories. Amankai Nawalpan is a writer and comics illustrator, currently working for DC Comics in series like Batman, Detective Comics, Justice League Dark, Nightwing, Crush and Lobo, and more. Amankai is also the creator of the graphic novel Clandestino, where he works as a writer, illustrator, and colorist. So with that, I'll leave you with Amankai and his presentation, Character Design for Comics in Clip Studio Paint. All right. Um, Mario, are you still there? Yes, yes. We can see okay, your can screen you and we can hear you. Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you. Cool. All right. The off we go. Um, all right, everybody. Um, thanks for joining in. Uh, thanks, Mario and Joanna, for um, taking care of this uh, webinar. And as it said, uh, I'm going to go through some basics of using Clip Studio and um, creating um, or, 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 or designing characters for comics uh, specifically. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna start showing off some some designs from uh, my most recent uh, series called Crush and Lobo, published by DC Comics. Um, as you can see, here are several different types of, of, of um, sizes and and forms and sh and shapes of of, of these characters. Um, this is like a very rough presentation of what a character's design would be. But the main thing that I want to show you here is how different sometimes uh, character design from gaming to comics will be because in gaming, uh, you can add as many details as you want because um, that's going to be rendered and you're not going to have to draw it again, which is in comics, you're going to be drawing these characters over and over again. So it's always important to keep that in mind when you're designing a character. Um, as you can see, probably the most complex one here is this robot, um, which eventually, when I had to draw him over and over again, uh, that ended up being uh, a little bit stressful sometimes, but um, still, it's trying to keep simple lines. Um, the way I work uh, with Clip Studio on creating these characters uh, is basically always starting um, from the basics, which is the the shape or the face of the character. What I'm going to do now is um, show you a little bit of the process of the creation of a character um, that uh, appeared in a miniseries called Gotham City Monsters that I worked on a couple of years ago. Um, and I usually always start by uh, trying out the faces. Uh, that's the first element. For this character, his name was uh, the Red Phantom. Um, 
the first thing that I, well, I obviously, uh, this was co-created with the writer, um, Steve Orlando, uh, and he gave me like a description. It, it was a, like a good looking man with a red suit, kind of like a, like a um, 1930s look. Um, so from that basis, I started working on um, the, the character. Um, so now, uh, I started with three different options for faces. Um, one of the tools that I really love from Clip Studio is um, when I'm working on these character designs is a symmetrical ruler, which is right here, which I use it a lot to um, pretty much uh, have like a shortcut uh, for drawing a face in, in, a, in a perfect way to say so. Um, here I'm going to show you how I use this. So as you see here I have these three options. The way I came up with these faces was first of all um, working on the head. As you can see this ruler, the symmet um, this one that's here, the symmetrical ruler, uh, what it does is it creates um, a reflection, a mirror reflection on either side of the ruler. So if I draw this to the left, it'll go automatically to the right. And this will allow you to, as the name says, give you like a symmetrical shape of what you're drawing. So you can work here um, on a face if you want to um, save some time and make it look as perfect as possible. Now, I usually just use this when I'm creating um, frontal view, like like this front view, because uh, obviously it, that'll be symmetrical. I don't use this when I'm working on a perspective or something, because uh, that'll be different. But at least this way you will get um, a more symmetrical face that you can then uh, start um, working out, adding extra details to make your character uh, look in different shapes and forms. So here you have like the basic um, head for that. Then I'm gonna turn this ruler off. Then if you have this shape, uh, you can copy and paste it. And now you have two same guys. And this is where you can start playing around. The way I started working on these faces on the right was pretty much the same. I first started with some different types of hairs. For example, we can play, we have those different styles. We can probably have like a mohawk for this guy or or not a mohawk, something more like this way here. Something that way. Also, with the hair, you can you could eventually use that that same ruler. Uh, let's say we want to have his hair to be the same way in both sides. I'm gonna undo all this, and then well, not everything. There you go. And then like we can start drawing his hair on this way here, and you can have the same exact shape of hair on both sides. So this is really a tool that helps a lot to um, speed up the creative process um, of of creating the the main part, which is the face, uh, which is probably the most important uh, when you're creating a character um, besides the suit and all that. And then on this side, we can probably give this guy some other hair style, something like that. So here we're not going to use the symmetrical ruler because his hair is not symmetrical on both sides. Then we can get rid of this bald part here. All right, so this is like a very basic way to start working on your character design. Um, now, once we've gone through this stage of defining the faces, I obviously, uh, to save some time, um, I worked ahead on that and created these three guys here. Um, you start deciding on, well, you go back and forth with whoever you're creating these characters with. 
uh, and you decide on one character or one face. In this case, uh, option three was the one that was going to be our character's face. So um, let's turn these guys off and let's turn this one off. And let's go to the next stage. Oh, and here's here's like a basic uh, head shape that you can always start working on. So this is like, uh, you start with a circle and then you start giving down here the um, the shape for 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 the chin and the neck of the character and then obviously this line in between is going to be where your center point is going to be for your nose and your mouth and in between the eyes so that's always um the shape that i use to start working on whatever face it is even if it's one of these big characters um I'm still going to use um, those circles and lines to, to line it up. I'm going to drink some water. <clears throat> All right. So, let's see. Now, I'm going to show you the way I started working on the suit of this character. Here we've got the um, options that we got here. Let's see. Okay. So here <clears throat> is one option that, uh, as I said before, I knew this character was going to have a red suit. So I started working on different options uh, for his suit. Uh, remember that I chose face number three, this guy here. So up here we have his face. I went with this option and then I went with this other option. All right. Um, <clears throat> when we were creating this character, uh, he was described as um, a very elegant man. Um, and in terms of choosing uh, the most elegant uh, suit, uh, we decided to go with this um, little kind of like longer coat. Um, the way you can start working on the suit um, designs, let me see, where's the layout for this one? Uh, nope. Okay. Um, the way I work on these different suit designs is Again, I start with the basics. As you can see here, uh, the shape of this body is pretty much the same as this one, but then you can start playing around with the different options that you wanna go, like eh, changing the, 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 the coat, changing the pants or whatever. Um, so once you have your head, I'm gonna show you here how to work this out, uh, okay. So here's the, uh, yeah. So this is the one that I was looking for. This one here is the basic uh, shape that I started with uh, to, to start playing around with what the clothing was gonna look like. So we knew that it was gonna be red and you can just start here, like as, as you saw before, uh, we had this one, we had this one, but we can also play around with something else. If we copy and paste that, we're going to have here another option. <clears throat> and for example, this guy could have had like a different kind of coat. Um, maybe something that was like more open. Something like a leather jacket or something. In order to change the shape of what he was wearing. Now, usually, um, when you're working with people that, uh, I mean, there's two different um, ways to go when you're creating characters for comic books. Uh, you either create the characters of your own comic book, and you're the absolutely uh, the absolute owner of what you'll decide that the the, the character is going to look like or you're working with more people. Uh, when it's just you, it's easier because you just decide what you want it to look like. Um, 
and and you're the one that gives the final the final approval um but when you're working with more people uh you always have to keep in mind that when you give them more options it'll take longer for them to decide on what character they want so ideally never give them too many options maybe uh two to three is probably the best um number because otherwise you're going to have like an infinite amount of options to choose from and it'll probably take longer to decide on one specific um, look for the character. Um, and on that same note, uh, ideally, if you already have the one that you like the best in mind, um, maybe that's the one that you wanna probably spend more time working on um, just so they can later see uh what the character will look like when it's like more finished um and that'll uh definitely uh speed up their decision on choosing what character they want to go with um which is what i actually did in this case when i was creating these uh designs for this character uh option number three this one here was the one that i liked the most so that's the one that i actually uh ended up uh sending in um and i had this other one with the suit and i think one other option that i i really didn't care too much so i i didn't even save the file but um but that was one other uh option that i had so those three were the ones that i, I ended up sending um and obviously uh this one on the right was the one that i liked the most okay so here we have another option for what for what could have been this character And as we said, because it was a um, a reddish color, we obviously end up painting this. Now, everything I'm doing here is the um, layout stage. Uh, so I'm still not going tight on inks. I'm still not going tight on on details uh, because I'm just working out the way. Uh, this character is first going to look like and then once I decided on that that's when I start working on the final look of the presentation sheet of this character which is what we'll go on right after I end up coloring this now that I think about it this look that I just came up here looks like a more modern look maybe it could be used in other iterations of this character we can have add like a like a red stripe here and then make his pants black maybe or gray something to match or to actually give a contrast to the color that we're using there um so what i'm doing here is i'm using the lasso tool to select all these areas and then filling in with the bucket there and gray shoes dun, dun. all right so there we have a different look for this same character obviously using the same um basic uh shape of the body as you can see they're all the same but that doesn't matter because what we, we really want to see here is the way uh this guy is gonna end up looking like so <clears throat> obviously as i spoiled at the beginning uh the final option that was chosen for this character was option number three um so we're gonna get rid of this guy and we're gonna get rid of this guy and next uh we're gonna go to uh the next uh stage which is the one when you where you start working out uh the little details and the turnarounds of the character the turnarounds are um for those that don't know are the different views of one same character so you have the front view you have you can have like a side view and then some details um where is this one okay so here i have my little cheat sheet 
for the turnarounds. Um, what I did here was created like a, um, a grid to later work on. So I have my main character here. Whoops, let's move him with all the body. There you go. And then what you want to do is you want to have him looking from the side to see what he will look like when you have to draw him on the side view. So he's wearing a long jacket. And this long jacket will look something like this. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is like uh, inking on top of the lighter pencil that I had. Now, this is always helpful because when you're drawing these characters, you're going to be drawing them over and over again uh, in the same book. And obviously what you want is them to look the same in every frame, every page, or every panel that you're working with them. So you want to make sure that you have him really, really um, recognizable in, in, in every, on every page. And when you have like these uh, cheat sheets that help you remind you how they look like, um, that obviously helps a lot. Okay, so that would be what he would look like on that end. And then here, we we have this this guy here, which is the one that we're going to use for the frontal view. And this was this is what I was talking about earlier. That uh, here in this case, you cannot obviously use the symmetrical ruler. Right now, I'm just using the the most basic. Uh, pencil that comes with Clip Studio. Um, that's usually the one that I always use for, for when I'm making comics. Um, and here what we're going to do is give like a three and a quarter view uh, to actually get a better view. Uh, we already know what he what, what, his, what his hair looks like uh, from the side. So here we want to see him like a little bit more on a, on a three quarter view. <clears throat> Really quick, working on that hair. We gave him like a like a shaved looking 1930s hair and a bow tie here to make him look more classy. And his long coat. And then one of the important things uh, when you're working on these character sheets, uh, because you're gonna be, usually when you're making comics, you can either work on your own and be the one that's going to be doing all the art and coloring, or you probably sometimes work with teams. Um, and when you're working with teams, you want to make sure that they also have every uh, note on what the character looks like for the coloring process, because you don't want them to miss uh, uh, a detail or something on the suit. So for example, here, what I did is um, I also came up with details of his gloves because he's wearing gloves so obviously we want the colorist to know that these are going to be gloves and that they're going to be white add a little, little line there for the seaming there and then the front or the top actually Uh, also has some details that are going to be added throughout the, the comic book. There, and here this little line there. So every time you have these kind of details, you want to make sure that they are on um, on this uh, on this character sheet. So everyone, whoever is working with this, even if you're the one that's not going to be 
uh, drawing uh, this character, whoever comes after you, uh, they'll know what he looks like and they'll know where all the details are. And then will you start coloring these guys here? Fingers. Okay, so we still have 15 minutes and <clears throat> once you have all this laid out, uh, this is when the fun part comes. Well, actually all this is fun, but um, now you start building on the on the final kind of like details um, or actually you start inking the sheet so then you can um, create the, the last process of this. Um, and when I'm inking, I'm going to turn off all these layers just to show you the inking process. Where is this? Here and here. Okay. So when I'm inking, um, Clip Studio has um, by default the real G pen, the, the G pen, turn pen, the turn it pen, um, all those kind of pens. Um, what I did was I modified the G pen. Here where you see the anti-aliasing, um, I always turn that to none uh, because <clears throat> there's a thing that I, I I like working when 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 I'm working on on Clip Studio is that if you see here, I'm gonna draw this circle. It's right now with anti-aliasing. Uh, for those of you that don't know what this is, you see there's a uh, it's a clean black circle. If I turn on to the max, which is strong, it gives a smoother edge to the line. And when you fill in, you're gonna see this little halo here. Um, and that is something that when I'm working on comics, it really bugs me because in order to save some time, I like to just uh, whatever, um, I don't know if it's a shadow because I work a lot with, with shadows and all that. So I work with this here and then you just fill it in and there's no halo. So. For that, um, <clears throat> I always turn on turn off the anti-aliasing, and uh, I work usually on a twenty, uh, yeah, like a twenty. Uh, I set up the the inking pin on on number twenty, um, and then you just start inking. So here I have like the the layout of of the pencils I did earlier um, for the line art of this. Uh, character design and uh, my thinking process is quite simple pretty straightforward just going straight ahead there and starting to work on the shapes and shadows now this piece is going to be colored so I'm going to leave a lot of the um, the shadow process to the colors. I'm just gonna ink this face really quick so we have time to show the next stage. <clears throat> so, so here, for example, because this guy has his black hair, um, this is where you're gonna actually see what I meant before with the anti-aliasing when 
I fill in the blacks. <clears throat> all right, so instead of having to select all this to just paint it, you go ahead and make sure there's no open spots and fill it. And you see, and there's no halo there. So it looks the way I want it to look. <laughs> And we continue with the rest of the head here. <clears throat> I'm gonna ink this guy really quick here so I can show you the coloring process as well. So once you've completed the line art, the black and white part of it, here and here. And here we have more shadows. So here we're gonna fill in with the blacks again, and then here. And the shadow he drops from the face, from the head. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to speed forward, and uh, what the inking process would end up looking like would be something like this here, mm -hmm. right here. You see? So here I have him. Obviously, I did this earlier before because... I want to show you guys all the steps here. Um, this is what it would look like if I just had the inks on it. We add all the details, like uh, we smooth the lines. This is all we did earlier before with the pencils. Now it's just the inks and it looks much cleaner. The gloves, the little details. And then we... Um, go ahead and start working on the coloring of this because obviously we know that he's going to have a red suit and we want him to look red. <clears throat> uh, 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 uh. So what we do is we start working on the selection of the colors. Where is the color selection? Okay, here it is, there's the color. <clears throat> uh, I create a new layer and this layer will go obviously um, right under the line art layer. And here is where we start working on the colors. Obviously, because this will be the final piece, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be more careful here with the line, make sure. All looks clean and smooth. I'm just going to show you the coloring process of this part of the code so we can move forward to the next step. Okay, we're just going to leave it up to there and here. <clears throat> and this. And we're gonna fill this in. There you go. Bow tie. It's also gonna be this reddish color. There. <clears throat> and his face. We're gonna get it skin color. And work on that really quick. Probably too white, or something darker. There you go, not too dark. All right. Um, we're gonna have this colored as well. 
there. All right, obviously the rest of the code is gonna be red too, but we're gonna play around with some shadows here. Um, so a very simple way to um, work with the shadows is I create a layer on top of the color layer and then um, probably with a, yeah, maybe a, a very light gray, you start working on, on the shadows. Now, now this is a, a quick way I have to um, add shadows to these uh, character design sheets that <clears throat> don't really require that much of like a lightning um, source or something just to give it a little more of depth. Um, don't worry, that gray is going to soon disappear, but first we're going to select all the areas that need to be covered in shadows. And add some shadows here, the wrinkles of the clothing, some other shadows here, and some shadows here. And this guy is going to have some shadows here too. <clears throat> and here, we're going to give some shadows to the face. And then I'll <clears throat> okay, so really quick there. Uh, quick shadows. And then on the layer options, you have several options here for uh, editing these layers. Um, obviously, the most common one is, well, it's always a normal, and you can add multiply. And as you see, already in multiply, you get... Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, you, you can see the change of what it looks like. Um, if it's too dark, you can turn down the opacity. And we gotta delete this. We're gonna make his eyes what color? We're gonna be first of all to be white here. And let's just go brown. <clears throat> all right. So there you have. Um, some quick uh, shadow droppings, and then you can add uh, some, a little bit of light. Uh, we're gonna choose a lighter color for this red. And we can add some little details here. And little by little, you start giving this 2D shape, a little bit more of a 3D look. You can also um, use the um, soft airbrush. We're gonna lock that layer and add some color there. And for his face, there and some other lights here <clears throat> something like that so then you repeat that same process for the whole sheet um, for all the other pieces to end up having something like uh, this all right now here a uh, couple of things that we have here First of all, um, I have the four basic colors that this character is gonna be um, using. Um, the details here are, well, obviously the colors and then the gloves and the sleeve. And uh, one of the things that this character has is that he turns into a demon. So um, this is his demon shape uh, when he's not a human. Um, and then you can obviously add the name of the character. This, in this case, he's called the Red Phantom style sheet and whoever created it. And that would probably be um, a pretty good way to have this character um, 
in front of you all the time reminding you what he looks like obviously as you saw um i went really quick with the coloring and all that but then you can play around with all the different um lightning options um coloring options uh whatever you want to play around with obviously when you have more time and that's pretty much it um i think that's the time we have and now we have to go to the questions right yes exactly i think you, you're perfectly on time so we have quite <laughs> a bit of time to answer questions and there are a lot there are okay, a, lot, cool. a lot of questions so let's let's get right into the into it um we'll start with the very basics what is your your drawing setup it's always an important uh, one <laughs> as as what tools do i do i use yeah 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 your computer your tablet uh, if you okay yeah i have a well i'm working on a desktop computer um and i work on a cintiq um 22 inch uh, 22 inch cintiq mm -hmm. okay do you have anything That's... else like that you use for your your workspace that you need um well i have two monitors um i think it's it's super important uh to have your cintiq monitor for uh in this case clip studio which is the uh, the, the program that i use pretty much all the time for making comics and then on the other monitor i uh, usually have like my references or mm -hmm. the script that i'm working on um or it's where I play music or whatever, um, but that's the one that is always uh, there um, as a guide to what I'm working on um, on the Cintiq. And I also have the the, the Wacom remote control, um, oh, which okay. is very yeah. useful for shortcuts and all that. Yeah. Um, speaking of shortcuts, you have this uh, panel in the upper right of your screen that says like pen, pencil. Yeah, exactly that one. That one. Yeah. <laughs> is that a, that's the Wacom? Right? Yeah, this is a welcome feature. Uh, you can set it up. The you can set it up uh, here at the. Uh, I'm not sure if, if you can actually see this. Let me know if can you see this window. Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay, so uh, Wacom has this welcome desktop center that allows you to um, uh, set up your remote control and the little windows that you can add uh, as uh, shortcuts. Hmm. Uh, which in this case I created this one that has the tools that I use the most when I'm using Clip Studio, which are the pen, the pencil, the eraser, uh, the scale, the free scale, copy, paste, and cut. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are the ones that I my basics. So yeah. those I always have in there that I can choose around, and it's really helpful to to have that there. Yeah. Okay, Save good. I th yeah, a lot of people are curious about that um, because that's not a Clip Studio feature. Um, yeah, but uh, with Clip Studio, you can use your keyboard uh, as a shortcut. And and I have uh, specific uh, letters uh, aligned to like pen or pencil. Mm -hmm. That's another way to, to quickly um, choose the button that you want to use. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, <clears throat> Always a popular question. What's he, what are the brushes you usually use? Uh, at best, pin it down to something. Do you have like a lot of custom brushes, or do you have like do you use default brushes more? You touched on this a, a little bit. Could you go more into detail on that? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so for the basics, like when I'm penciling, um, as you saw, I use the regular darker pencil that comes with Clip Studio. There's several other different uh, pencils, but I usually I, I stick to to the to the basics when when I'm using uh, programs and all that. So um, this is the one that I use. And for inking, as you saw before, um, I can either use the G uh, G pen or a modified G pen that I made that is a little bit more rougher looking. Um, but the key thing for me is always this anti-aliasing uh, option where I always turn it to zero. And then you see I have a lot of other um, different um, um, uh, brushes here that I've like either purchased or downloaded. And those are usually for like uh, special effects and stuff like that. Um, like uh, this is one that I use a lot. And this is actually a default brush from Clip Studio, which is the droplet for like splatter and, and, and stuff like that, um, that I really love. Um, it has some organic texture to, to your art uh or or this other one here the blood stain um these are like my favorite brushes uh outside of the inking one 
Mm -hmm. um the semi dry brush i like it a lot too it looks like a like a dry kind of like stroke and then yeah. i have uh i purchased these ones that are um uh i forgot her name she's done a, a bunch of webinars uh with clip studio too uh i can't remember her name right uh now but um probably remember her. you oh, guys always the, work with yeah her. um it's sarah jean the one with bear <laughs> yeah the one with bear that's the one <laughs> that's the one yeah. so i i purchased these ones and i i also uh i like them a lot because they have this organic texture to to it so um yeah sometimes i use these ones also when when i'm working on on i don't know sometimes i want to give it like a special kind of like look or something like this one here for like hatch crossing and all that is is really yeah. good yeah. Um, but yeah, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, mainly, um, just uh, my main goal when I'm working digital is that the line doesn't look like super digital. I try to keep it to look more organic. Um, so that's why I use like a, just a, a regular pen that looks like if you're working like with Micron or something like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And then, then you have like a, an endless world to explore with all other different, uh, brushes, yeah. uh, for effects and all that. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a never ending <laughs> story there. Yeah. There are so many, there's so many yeah. brushes. I always like the, the question is there the one magic brush that can do everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Usually it's um, more about what you can do with what you have already and then start playing around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just as a quick side note, uh, we recently updated a lot of the brushes. So some of in the in new downloads, not all of the brushes okay. that were there before are in awesome. the software anymore, but we still offer them on Clip Studio Assets so they can still be downloaded for free in case someone's looking for them. So I think like a lot of the, the pencil brushes uh, disappeared, but they're still on the asset store. So oh, okay. Someone's looking for that. Yeah, I guess I haven't updated my Clip Studio yet. <laughs> oh no, no. If you if you just update, then they will stay will stay the same, and then oh, okay, they're, they're, add they're, more. Okay, they're still there. Right, yeah, so. Just if you like complete newly download Clip Studio, they might not be there. So oh, I see. But, but they're still available, and then the assets library has like tons more to go with. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see what else do we got. Um, so we talked about the character design, and the question was. Um, do you draw, do you design a character usually to have one outfit for a book or how many outfits do you usually have per character per book? Um, in this case, uh, for the Red Phantom, it was just one, uh, one suit. Um, but there's this other character, um, well, uh, I worked on, on this book called, uh, Crush and Lobo, uh, I got a picture here. Let me see if you guys can see this. So, can you see that? Um, yeah. Crush and Lobo, I think you can see it, or maybe mm -hmm. not. Oh, you can see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this character, the girl in the middle, uh, well, Lobo is a very recognizable character from DC Comics, um, and this is his uh, daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, for her, she was already a character that was designed. But we uh, we gave her other different kind of like uh, um, clothings during the the series. So for her, I did design some some clothing, some jackets and stuff like that, uh, which I don't have right here right now. But um, but yeah, I, I sometimes you do end up designing different uh, suits for for the characters for different occasions. Uh, mm -hmm. So for 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 instance, uh, for this guy here, where where we have him with um with the suit maybe uh this would have been an alternative uh if he wasn't wearing the original suit he would probably go around wearing this thing for mm. some other special occasion or something who knows mm. but yeah it's always uh an option to to have um an alternative look for that character yeah but like um do you sometimes forget like which features you had in the character and then in some panels he has 
I don't know, just like <laughs> a few extra things, like I don't know, an, an earring or something. I hear that from from other creators. They're like, yeah, oh. yeah, <laughs> uh, that happens a lot. That's why you always have to have that uh, that uh, style sheet. Um, for me, it helps a lot to have a. Uh, um, this guy here because um, when I finish an issue for example I always have to or, or probably not even an issue every, every five pages or so I go back and review everything to make sure that as you say the character is not missing an earring it's not missing a bracelet or something because yeah. maybe readers won't notice it but for sure someone will and if someone does then your job <laughs> is not doing great <laughs> yeah. so, do you have an editor that helps you with yes. that yes so we actually work with editors um uh for every mini series that we work on or every title uh there is an editor and editors do help a lot also uh when they review the final uh when they have like the final look of the, of the book uh sometimes they're like hey uh we're missing something here can you add this or or not or or blah blah, blah. Um, so yeah, that also helps because sometimes you're like so focused on, on the page and work that you s just forget that there's, yeah. there's a missing earring or something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I usually, well, obviously it helps when you have the, the style sheet. Um, I usually review every five pages or so, mm -hmm. uh, what I've been doing in the back just to make sure that everything looks coherent mm -hmm. and editors, and the writer also uh, do help uh, with the final notes of, of details yeah. and all that. Um, speaking of consistency, um, there was a question about how you keep your characters consistent if you have to draw them so many times. I think that's especially <laughs> difficult for beginning artists. Yes, and that's why uh, these style sheets are so helpful because having this, you already know that this guy is going to look like this when he's facing front all the time. So. Uh, when you're drawing him, you're gonna know that uh, this this side of uh, of his hair is gonna go this way, uh, that his eyebrows are gonna be like this shape, that he's gonna have this bow tie, and then when you're drawing him from this, and you you know his hair is gonna look like this. So that's why um, I mean it's it's a lot of practice, but also uh, having these style sheets helps a lot because then you just quote unquote copy what you did before uh and make sure that it looks like uh the the the, the first drawing you did all the way down the the rest of the comic book so um it's a lot of practicing um but also uh using these references uh, that's what we make them for uh in order to uh make sure that the character looks the same all the way through hmm. what's your what's your favorite part of designing characters uh i think coming up with well there's two uh when i get the approval i guess it's a favorite because <laughs> because you're sense. always uh with, with the challenge of of oh man what, what what are they gonna say are they gonna like it are they gonna want to make changes and all that but obviously beside that uh it's uh when you start um when you have your your blank page and you start just scribbling ideas out and all that that's probably the most interesting part um and i guess when when you when when you're on the final stage like on on this here and you create the whole thing and you see it and it's like okay it looks cool or or it looks nice or whatever um like with these ones here um with these characters uh they're all so different um that it was always like a like a little challenge like we were talking earlier before uh, about this, uh, the the lizard here. <clears throat> this was lots of fun to create, um, uh, playing around with the colors and all that. But here in this case, um, all these other little details, um, when they were reviewed, uh, we ended up not leaving them and just uh, having the 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 lizard with with a green color and and those kind of like leaves uh, over the eyes. Um, and this one, uh, the funny thing is that it has like a friendly mode and an attack mode. Um, mm. So you have those two different modes for this uh, lizard. But yeah, that 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 part is uh, my favorite, I guess, when you're starting like to 
figure out what it's going to look like. Yeah. Do you prefer <clears throat> coming up with your own or do you like to work based on the description? Um, I like both. I like both actually because um, when you have a description, it's probably easier to uh, nail down what the client wants. Um, like if they're like already like I want this guy in a suit looking like this and and this, then you're like okay, it's pretty much straightforward like this. Uh, but then on the other side, when when you're creating your own characters, um, it's it's you 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 probably have a a, a wider range of different options of where you want to go and what you want them to look like and all that. So um, I don't know. I I, I probably I guess it's it's more fun to create your own characters um, because uh, you can go pretty much you can do whatever you want. Hmm. But on the other side, I mean, when you're uh, running against time, um, when you get the description of what the client wants, it's like okay, pretty straightforward, uh, and you get the job done. Yeah. How often does it happen that you completely have to rework something because it was like not at all what the client wanted, or does that happen um, at all to you? <laughs> Luckily, um, I've never had to like completely rework uh, something. Um, I did, for example, in this case, um, <coughs> sorry. this one here, uh, this is actually not the, the, the final face of this girl. Uh, mm. We ended up going with something more alien. Um, let me see if I actually have that file here. Um, because uh, she was looking too human here and what they wanted was for her to look a little bit more like an alien hmm. um so uh here it is uh it's loading okay so this is what the final oh, face yeah. ended up looking like uh so it's completely i mean it's not completely different but it's it's it it looks more alien right compared to this yeah yeah absolutely so we kept everything else. We kept the clothing, the looks, and all that, the mm. color of the skin, but we just changed a little bit more the eyes and and the shape of the face and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's one of those um, one of those uh, times where where you you end up changing a little bit more of what you initially had in mind in your head and to what we ended up putting in the book. Yeah. And and well, this other character that we were talking about earlier, um, this one, uh, he ended up changing his nose in in the final, mm. in the final um, piece. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So sometimes you do have to change some stuff, but I mean, it's not. I mean, when it's not a big deal, it, it's it's fine. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it's probably just something small you need to change. Yeah. We talked about this before the session. It's just yeah. like tiny changes that are requested. It's very interesting yeah. to 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 hear that. And how frustrating is it for you to to or is it at all frustrating if someone wants to change a design you're really fond of? Uh well yeah sometimes you're like oh but I really liked this. Uh yeah. for example uh I wasn't completely convinced when I when I when I when they asked for something more alien I was like oh, okay I'll give them something that looks really alien and it looks really ugly like this one. <laughs> And they were like, excellent, that's just <laughs> what we had in mind. And I was like, oh, man, but the other one looked like so cute and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah. And then the challenge is, 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 is drawing this face here and giving it uh, expressions and emotions throughout the, yeah. the storyline. Because uh, obviously it's, it's, it's harder to give emotions to this face rather than this one. Uh, yeah. Which is, yeah, true. Um, so yeah, but those are are the fun parts of <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of the character process. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's part of a part of the business. Yeah, I would, I would imagine that you have to like if you if you're working for a big company and you get the request, then that's what you got to do. That is that's probably yeah for sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, they 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 know what they want, so yeah, uh, definitely. Just got to give them that. Yeah. Um, so we're coming to the end now. Uh, just to close everything up, um, do you have any recommendations for beginning artists who really want to get into character design? Um, how much should they practice? <laughs> Stuff like that. Any closing <laughs> comments on on people who would like to get into character design for their own comics or for like 
aspiring DC artists? Um, <clears throat> well, one of the main things for character design is anatomy. Uh, that's something that you really have to practice a lot. Uh, no matter if, like in this case, it's a robot, uh, a big scary alien or, or a lizard or this um, manatee looking insect with human legs. Um, anatomy is always uh, key and important to that. And then once you have your anatomy um, um, handled, uh, you pretty much, uh, it's, it's, it's way easier to start like working out uh, different um, shapes and, and and forms for 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 characters uh obviously um <clears throat> this insect here uh it doesn't have the proportions of the, the the exact anatomy of a human but you already know the rules of anatomy and then you can play around and start shaping out the form of that um that's one thing um the other one is uh i love uh um, searching uh, character design artists on on online, like on on social media or stuff like that, uh, because every every artist is different, and you can learn uh, a lot from all the different artists. And then you can probably find uh, the way or or the line that of style that you want to work on, um, and that's uh, super helpful. Um, and and searching for references also uh, helps a lot um movie char character designs game designs as i mentioned earlier uh designing characters for for video games is totally different to designing characters for comic books because mm. you're gonna have to draw them all the time so you don't want to go like with crazy details on on your designs um but for for gaming and movies it's not a problem because you can just make a 3d shape of it and then that'll go on by its own so um, so yeah, basically, I think those are like the three points: um, mm. anatomy, uh, um, uh, using references, and and looking for the different other, uh, looking for inspiration on on other mm. uh, character design artists. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thank you so much for for your explanations and your time for this webinar. I think well, Mario thank you, and I hope uh, people enjoyed it. Um, yeah. I hope they, they learned something and, and it yeah, can be useful for everyone. Yes, absolutely. We had so many more, more questions, um, but unfortunately, we're out of time at this point. All right. Yeah, so thank you so much, Amankai, for this wonderful webinar. Everybody loved it. And we just want to share one last bit of information. Learn more about Clip Studio Paint and our website clipstudio.net forward slash n and also graphicsly.com. A reminder that this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channels, Clip Studio Paint channel and Graphicsly. So don't forget to subscribe to receive a notification once it's available. And also for more information about Amankai and his projects, don't forget to follow him on social media as Amankai underscore art on Twitter and Instagram and also if you have Facebook follow him as well so with that uh, we want to say thank you to all of the attendees thank you Joanna so much for handling all of the questions and of course thank you so much Amankai for this wonderful webinar thank you guys so with that I was just going to let you know that please stay tuned for more events promotions and we'll see you in our next event. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.